Light is one of the most significant ways you can affect your biochemistry. The best way to take care of your mitochondria is through light. Why have we not heard about this before? They found it ridiculous that why couldn't you go to a pharmacy or a fitness center and just like get something that really boosts your health and that empowers your health and makes you stronger because it has that effect on the mitochondria. When you are as into keto and understanding the connections in your body, which it also just lit up for me how much mitochondria and how much light receptors are actually in your stomach. It's like more there than anywhere else in your body. Like where the mitochondria sit are like in your inner organs. So if you can reach them with this light, yes, of course it's going to have an effect. It's going to have a positive effect. The benefits of the sun and why do you think they're trying to block it? Yeah, about the sun and not the politics of the sun or... <laughs> Talk about the dangers of too much artificial light. I mean, we changed everything to LED lighting over, it's almost overnight. Most LED lights made for households have sort of shortened the wavelengths to just be maximally effective output in order to save energy, ironically, right? It's a climate friendly slash, uh, you know, that kind of initiative, but it has adverse effects on the human physiology they were never tested for. They're not necessarily like, you know, it's not dangerous, it won't kill you to be exposed to one, but when you're always around it, that has profound consequences for us that we are kind of just living through the experiment of. Hey Bjorn, welcome to the Keto Camp Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. Nice to be here, Ben. Thank you. I want, I want to start here with a quote that I heard you say, and I, and I loved it, and I want you to elaborate on the quote. Here's the quote. Light is one of the most significant ways you can affect your biochemistry. The best way to take care of your mitochondria is through light. Please share more. Well, that was sort of the discovery that brought me into uh, sort of co-founding a company that has created a, uh, a new device that delivers an infrared, near infrared and red light therapy specifically. Uh, and uh, it is the discovery that there is such a profound effect on the mitochondria from these specific wavelengths. And that's documented back, you know, several, several decades. Um, this is that this is not widely known was kind of uh, a few of my co-founders were mildly outraged when they discovered it. It's like, why have we not heard about this before? They found it ridiculous that why couldn't you go to a pharmacy or a fitness center or wherever and just like get something that really boosts your health and that empowers your health and makes you stronger, like because it has that effect on the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. um, so we were all amazed and uh, I knew nothing about it from before, uh, but I had a background with keto and biohacking and stuff. So I already was part of the paradigm shift, you could say, mm -hmm. like that probably part of what we co-founded the company on. Um, so yeah, I would say uh, few things are proven to be more effective for your mitochondria. Keto diet might be a very significant other way to affect it, but that there is a clear link between near infrared light wavelengths of specific power and specific wavelengths uh, and the effect it has on the mitochondria um, and the, the quite dramatic benefits that it can, uh, it can also then create. Um, yeah, we have to get this out to people. I agree hundred percent. And you know, it's not surprising to me that this information was kind of covered because let's face it, you can't really put it into a pill, right? You can't make billions of dollars like you can with big pharma. So it makes sense to me that most people don't know this, but let's unpack infrared light, near infrared, far infrared, what exactly that means and what is the role mm -hmm. of the sun with all of this as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, the sun is the start of it all, uh, right? Because we, we tend to think of it as an object or something that we kind of take for granted, but we live inside of this cosmic ferocious sort of energy crazy spectrum we are this little kernel in the middle that's like shielded and it's like perfectly protected from it and we tend to think i don't know at least how i grew up it was sort of like outer space was some sort of empty place you know yeah. uh, and the really only reason why it sort of feels like an empty place uh, it's because our ears and eyes are adapted to this earth that we inside this bubble so we can't our ears can't pick up but when you do all the, I mean, all the science, like I'm, you know, I'm really into cosmology. Uh, it's a sort of a side thing, but all the stuff that you learn about how the universe actually works, uh, it's ferocious out there. So much energy, so much power and it's feeding everything. Right. And we even have this day night circadian rhythm just to like 
you know, the, the balance of life in a way hinges on being able to bounce back of like being whew, like away for six hours or 12 hours from that sun. Right. Uh, so the power of the sun is just like, that's the force of it all. Uh, and infrared is a very large part of the spectrum, just off the visible spectrum. Uh, and is actually, uh, over 50% is measured 53% of the energy, total energy on the spectrum that we get is from the infrared range. It is a very profound part of the spectrum. It's not just a narrow bandwidth, right? And uh, that has produced us a lot of effects in the body that we can't see it, but because it penetrates through us, the wavelengths are longer. So, and because the wavelengths are long, they have the, the property that they can penetrate through the skin. Mm -hmm. So with the device we created to go straight on the skin and just be like maximally efficient, you can get up to 10 centimeters depth like that energy can reach up to 10 centimeters in right uh, which reaches um your mitochondria yeah you reach the mitochondria in a way you couldn't um couldn't from other uh, other kinds of light uh and so all the example, signs for example sorry, like, like with the panel with the red light panel which i also love i have one here too that is yeah. very different than your device and if you're watching on youtube um, i'm going to hold it up here you can see it's called the flex beam and we'll talk more about it because this is actually making contact with your skin. So you're saying this penetrates deeper, uh, about 10 centimeters deep versus uh, red light panels or even the sun. It's not touching your skin directly, number one, but also there's a reflection coming off as well, the skin. Is that true? Yeah, uh, indeed. And this uh, design stemmed from our inventor, Arjen Helder, who like discovered this and he's like a super super smart nerd about this could put all of this together when he realized the like he had the capacity to do it right but his first insight is that the way you can get red light therapy from a panel and they're all sort of they're mass produced like in china they're actually made for plants originally and then someone remade them so you can sell mm -hmm. them to humans and it makes sense it's a light source but uh, the physics of it is that you if you're only this far like 10 centimeters away from the source you have lost 90 percent of the energy already mm. wow like it doesn't it doesn't really travel wide like yes there may be some benefits of being in a room that's sort of lit with red light or infrared but if you want to get that powerful effect like you, if you actually want to reach down and give a dose to your mitochondria of this energy you need it to be like really directly on and quite powerful why can't like, you make contact with the panel why can't you just put the panel on your skin then I mean, you can, uh, of course it's, I mean, it's not super comfortable to have that yeah. for various reasons onto your skin. Um, but like if you have a small one that you can cover apart, uh, or something, uh, but there's also significant electromagnetic radiation or EMFs mm -hmm. like coming from such devices. And they're usually when, when they're, they're grounded, they have a lot of EMFs. Mm. So we designed our device specifically that it's totally in case. So it has like, we have videos that's like measuring it. It's like. You know, yeah. there's virtually nothing. So this was part of like, it, it should come as close as possible and not be dangerous or cause any other, um, potential damage. I love that you measure the EMFs. That was a question I was going to ask you and your YouTube channel is terrific. You have a lot of videos on there about the different uses, um, for the flex oh, beam and, and conditions. Yeah. yeah, it was terrific. I, I had a great time looking at it and we'll dive a little bit more into, into your products, but I want to stay on the topic of red light and photobiomodulation. There are a lot of studies out there, right? I mean, you talk about it a lot. I've seen a lot of studies on PubMed and other uh, sources. There are thousands of studies on the benefits of photobiomodulation. So now you're explaining to me there is a difference between actually physically having the red light touch you versus being a few inches away or a few centimeters away. I'm thinking, and the question is like the studies that show the benefits, what are they referring to more of the panel or the person's away? And if that's the case, that's interesting because if you're still losing 90% of the benefits, but they're still showing, you know, some positive benefit in the study, that's pretty remarkable. Are there some studies that distinguish kind of the ones that are being applied or you're touching the panel versus the ones that you're dis you're distant from? Does, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes good sense. And it's, uh, there are various devices have been used. It's usually trying to measure a certain dosage. Right. So there's a certain kind of output. There's a calculation for you could put almost any kind of panel or light in as long as it has these and these frequencies or mm. this, this and this power. 
Um, but I mean, we are doing in the small scale that we can afford, but building up for us is very important to document this. And uh, yes, there's a lot of red light therapy devices out there, but we are really marketing and selling and finding an audience with people who don't know about that whole, like what that universe is like in the first place is their first introduction to the idea that infrared or light red can have mm -hmm. some sort of, some sort of property. Uh, so for us, it's super important to document the science, not just pointing to there's 15,000 papers on PubMed on photobiomodulation. Wow. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying they're all good papers, right. um, but you know, there are a lot of people are working on it uh, and, and have been for, for quite a while. And, and NASA developed this like prototypes for it in the 2000s, and they used it as part of their astronaut programs and stuff. So a lot of it, there's, it's a lot there, but it hasn't quite reached through in medical science for various reasons uh, that we can explore or not explore. And then also um, it hasn't, um, it hasn't been made available right. in a certain kind of way. Uh, and the kind of device we could make now really rests on an LED revolution that happened a few years back where it's even possible to pack in certain kind of power. Like this kind of thing would be a lot more difficult and more expensive just 10 years ago. Mm. Yeah. And, and you know, you're right. You, you, you ask a conventional allopathic doctor, Mm -hmm. about the benefits of red light therapy. Should I implement it for my you know, health? And they're going to probably say um, they've never heard of it or it's a little woo woo. There's no science mm -hmm. to show that it works. So yeah. it's, it's far along in that case. But in our space, right, the biohacking space, alternative med medicine space, we understand photobiomodulation is very important. We understand the role, the importance of healthy mitochondria. So yeah. with, with the mitochondria and you're explaining how red light has the ability to actually penetrate the cell membrane, the mitochondrial membrane, and create this positive um, hormetic benefit. What is the mechanism here? Is, it, is, the, is the light stressing the mitochondria and that stress is forcing it to adapt and create um, more mitochondria via mitochondrial biogenesis? Mm -hmm. Is the stress also causing the weak mitochondria to go into um, mitophagy? What exactly is happening biochemistry-wise? I mean, from what I know of it, and, and my background is more philosophy of science and then science uh, on this, but it's um, the prevailing mechanism or the one that is uh, usually referred to the most is the hermetic stress type response, that it causes that it stimulate, like, you know, it's a nicer word to say you stimulate it, but that's what stimulation is. You're just richening it and then letting it, letting it bounce back, you know, and that's, um, uh, but there are many mechanisms with infrared it is it is actually uh, it's a little bit of a, it's not a mystery but there's so many uh different aspects it, like we produce a chart of this on our on our web page of just like all the things that happens when you energize mitochondria mm. and the list kind of like it's really it's got profound systemic effects right um that that's i, I want to look at that chart i was just looking it up right now that's fascinating yeah. it's on your recharge.com website uh recharge.health I want to take a quick break from the video you're watching to share something with you that has made a big difference with my health and the thousands and thousands of students that I teach all across the world. Now, this is a unique device that has been shown to help with skin health, sore muscles, wrinkles, psoriasis, eczema, scoliosis, migraines, sleep issues, arthritis, acne, scar tissue, wound healing, relaxation, and also boost testosterone levels. What am I talking about? What is this miracle drug? Well, it's not a miracle drug. It's red light therapy. As you can see here, this is called photobiomodulation. And I use this red light therapy device every single day. Not only do I use it, my fiance uses it. Our dogs and cats love it. And the device I have here is from Bond Charge. Bond Charge has a different range of big panels, small panels, from affordable to ones that are a little bit more money, depending on how much you want. And I love this product. I feel so good. And it doesn't take a lot of time to get all these benefits. I simply take off my glasses, which is Bond Charge glasses, by the way, turn it on, and I have it running for 20 minutes once a day. And turn it on, and as you can see, I just leave it there on my desk as I work. 10, 20 minutes uh, per day will suffice. And it makes a big difference. You're going to notice a big improvement with your skin health and all the things we mentioned earlier in just a matter of weeks. So if you want to get your hands on this Bond Charge red light device or get their big panels, they also have panels that you could take on the go that are more affordable, then head over to bondcharge.com slash keto camp. 
and use the coupon code KETOCAMP to get 15% off your red light device, or as a matter of fact, your entire order. Any product, you could get 15% off with that nice coupon code KETOCAMP. So whether it's these Bond Charge blue light blocking glasses, their sauna blanket, or any of their awesome products, use that coupon code KETOCAMP at checkout. We'll drop a link down below. Go check them out. They are awesome. And let's get back to today's video. Hormesis, right? And we know the value of hormesis. That's what keto does. That's what fasting does, what cold exposure does, sauna, red light therapy. That means there's a right way to do it. And not more is not necessarily better. And yeah. um, what is a good... I know everybody's different. Everybody has different uh, healthier mitochondria versus the mitochondria that might be in a cellular danger response and dysfunctioning. What would be a good gauge to know if you are in that hormetic zone or if you've done too much red light or, or any kind of hormetic stress, what's a good way to pay, what's a good thing to pay attention to? You know, that's a really good question, Ben. Uh, and it's one of the challenges of this is finding exactly articulating what is the Goldilocks zone, right? For the dose. Uh, and I mean, first off, you're absolutely right. Is the one thing we usually have to tell people who get excited about this when they first feel the effects that, just because you like use it for 10 minutes and you do feel something where it seems good um that doesn't doing 60 minutes is not going to make it six times better yeah right? um Very because important. the typical we're, we our default mindset is like more is better right in this case it's it's not so uh i mean we advise taking small breaks that you use it daily and then take a break or two uh, and keep observing what is happening. Like if you don't have any, um, like if you're not noticing any effects like you do, do, most people do in the beginning, like where it becomes noticeable. By the way, I mean, you you have tried one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I could share my experience, right? So yeah, I and I have uh, the panel and I have some other, yeah. um, like more targeted, but I've never had one that actually is, is like this, where I actually strap mm -hmm. it on and mm -hmm. make contact with it. And then there's different settings here. So there's three different settings, uh, one, two, and three. And you could explain a little bit about each different setting and what it does. But uh, I've been using it for a week now and mm -hmm. I've used it. Uh, I woke up uh, the other morning and my upper back slash neck was bothering me. So I was doing some stretches and then I thought, oh, I have the flex beam. So I applied it you know, on my back slash shoulder and did some stretches. And you know what? The, the pain's gone. It went away in about 24 hours, but it was bothering me a lot that morning. Something mm -hmm. that I'm dealing with right now, and I want you to coach me on how I should use this, is um, two days ago, Sunday. So what is that? Three days ago, I was playing basketball. I do every Sunday. And I was playing against this six foot five guy. I'm six foot two, so I'm not short, but this guy was taller. And I went to go drive to the basket and his knee went right into my thigh. And I have this deep, contusion bruise in my thigh right now that I can't even walk without being in pain. So I've been putting this on there um, once a day for 10 minutes, right over that bruise. Should I do more? Which setting should I do? So you give me some coaching on how I should use that for this thigh contusion. Yeah. So in, in this case, I would say you put it on, like you just place it where it hurts after it hurts, right? As the initial uh, stimulus. Um, and then because this is relatively acute, Mm -hmm. right this right. is something that happened like an incident then uh one more time before bed ah, okay. to stimulate before um because your recovery is then really happens overnight right um and they're actually uh we have significant in the early case studies we have on sleep and the connection with improving sleep with red light therapy or like with uh with the flex beam it's also an interesting side effect but the the sleep cycle is very important right um so that you keep applying it then every day every day for up to a week i mean you should be able to see something within a couple of days or feel that it's well you know faster um, than usual on monday the day after i couldn't even walk like i usually walk my dog twice a day and i was having a really hard time doing that today i'm able to walk yeah. much better i'm able to go up my stairs here in my townhouse that i live in so it's getting better um it's still really painful i'm not able to run but with that being said i do think it is helping me because when i looked up uh thigh contusions and that's exactly what i have Mild mm -hmm. thigh contusions take about seven to 10 days to recover. And then more severe ones take about like a month. I think mine is more mild to a little bit mm -hmm. severe. 
And I'm on track to play again this Sunday. Like that is my goal. And now I'm just going to add in that nighttime routine of the okay. first game. And I'll give you, I'll give you an update if I'm able to play basketball. Yeah, cool. I look forward to hearing that. That's a good challenge. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the kind of challenge I would love to hear about that actually, because this is, these are the, like, I'm not going to overpromise anything because everybody's different and you know, it's hard to be like the salesman of it, but Hey, try it out for yourself. You're already into self-experimenting. And, uh, we have 15,000 users now. Wow. Like, we have a trust pilot, like excellent rating, like people, we, we do this because people love this device and what it does for them. Uh, and that's what really drives it forward. And then everybody's different and finds a different use. Um, you know, but, um, yeah, see if it like, uh, it should help you reach that game, but, uh, that's let's goal. See. I'm going to add yeah, in the nighttime cool. routine starting tonight and then yeah. I'll continue with the daytime, which setting should I choose one, two or three and explain the settings by the way. Yeah, so it's uh, it's about the ratio between red and near infrared light. Uh, red is really useful for skin, so it stimulates collagen production and really penetrates only skin level or just sort of toward the epidermis. Whereas infrared goes deep, right, and has such so, so a different effect that it penetrates. Mm -hmm. So the difference between one, two, and three is really how deep you want to treat. So a setting one is mostly we say it's skin; it's a skin level. There's just a a light infrared part so you can penetrate a little bit, but it's mostly surface. So what and then nano, setting, that's like what, 625 nanometers or yeah, so? 625 and then 815 near infrared. Okay. So it's just the ratio is different and it pulsates a bit differently. So it's, it's designed for skin. And uh, setting two is the one, if you're ever in doubt, you can always use setting two because it's it's got just as much of both red and infrared and it's pulsating it's like uh, it's quite powerful infrared but if you go to setting three you get very little red and only infrared even more that's the deep tissue like the when you really need to reach something that's probably, uh, that, probably so for a lot of muscular sorry i should probably be doing more three than anything else it sounds like like three is probably going to be most effective but two will not be wrong so i i mean for myself i would say i would start with two because you would have an effect and then you could go to three okay. eventually to kick it up a gear. I'll do but that. They're both, they're both gonna, they're both going to give you a, a strong dose in 10 minutes. Yeah. That's the cool thing I like about it. And I don't have to, I could take it with me. So I could yep. be working, I could be cooking, I could be doing whatever, reading a book and it's strapped on, you know, for those who are watching on YouTube, you saw, you saw the device and you could always look it up. We'll put a link down below, but it's strapped on. It has, a strap here it has three light bulbs here or i don't know if, are they called light bulbs or panels we'll call them or they're uh, light emitting diodes there so, you go yeah and then they have the settings feature and then you turn it on select the setting and it's about 10 minutes long uh and here's what i found in my research uh, at least let's see if this has changed but flex beam is three times more powerful than any wall panel on the market i've heard you say that before is that still the case i think that there are wall panels now that are similar power that okay. uh, when we did that, it was when we launched originally on crowdfunding, that was the case from the looking at the specific area that you cover in terms of the effect you get in that one spot, if you put it over your shoulder, uh, is, is much, much stronger than any of the prevailing, like the juves and things at the time. Uh, I know that there's more power packed into these panels now. Got it. Uh, so I'm not going to stand it. Like, I, I don't think that's right anymore. Yeah, I'm cool. I respect that. Off, but... Out yeah. of your, um, how many years of research have you been? How, when did you start the company? How long have you been researching photobiomodulation? Well, it started in 2018. Uh, and uh, we did R&D and prototyping and development until 2020. So that was the heavy research phase. We already had an early idea for what it would do, but it, a lot of the extra time on development was trying to find, like trying to determine that Goldilocks zone mm -hmm. that you referring to earlier because everybody's so different and to find settings that are safe but still powerful and that will give results and finding advice around it too uh it's something we're learning as we're going and so we're trying to be clearer about it we're going to be even clearer with our current users and give them more tips and tricks if they you know along the line when they use the device um but it's also something we're learning from feedback as we get more and more users yeah there I is a bit of like we're charting a new way with this and we're trying to be super transparent about everything we have and we're, we want to make sure it's very very safe uh, but we want to learn from all our users out of the five seven eight years of research you've been doing uh, on photobiomodulation 
at all the hours you've spent and all the anecdotal evidence, all the stories of, of you, your users, what's the most surprising benefit you've seen with red light therapy, photobiomodulation? What, what surprised you the most? That's a really good question. I think for me personally, uh, it was the connection to the gut. Mm, explain uh, more. Yeah. So, I mean, we now mostly promote this and sell it and talk about it in the sense of, you know, injuries that has specific uses or like you strain something or for like a recovery of athletic issues. That's the main sort of storyline of what this is really, really powerful and good for. Um, but it has this, uh, when you are as into keto and understanding the connections in your body as much, it also just lit up for me how much mitochondria and how much light receptors are actually in your stomach. And it's like more there than anywhere else in your body. Right. Um, so simply just putting it on, like, that's how I first could notice that this does something, if you know what I mean, because it impacted my digestive system in mm -hmm. such a way. Um, in the beginning, you're often looking for a way to like, to be assured of yourself. It's really working is really doing something because the treatment itself is quite invisible. It helps when you understand the science, but if you don't understand the science, it's a little bit like, okay, it's like you're expecting it to be like a massage gun that is like popping or something, yeah. right? But it's like you're having to let it work and you have to often sleep and just feel better the next day. It's not about like instant, right? it's exactly. not like an instant thing. Yeah. So the gut has more light receptors than anywhere else. That is interesting. So would the best, the best time to use it be after a meal during digestion or would that not be the best time to use it? Um, I think if you don't have digestive issues, like after a meal is not necessarily, um, uh, the best idea on an empty stomach, it can be a very powerful way to, uh, okay. to stimulate your gut microbiome. Uh, in the morning, it's a way to reset, like if you want to help reset your circadian rhythm, for example, using it in the morning, in the evening, and then on the stomach is, uh, is one of the more effective settings. And personally, I like it because you're sort of, you're hugging it and you're getting the warmth into your core. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I know a lot of people who favorably use it as part of meditation in that way. And they're just like making your, themselves more focused on the gut. And then having this sort of healing 10 minute session that is also a, you know, a letting go moment and just soaking up the energy where, you know, it's going to be the most effective systemically. Um, yeah, that was the most surprising thing to me that it was not just muscle ligaments, but you know, the core. I love, I love that idea. I haven't used it on my gut yet. And I will knowing that, uh, what about something that is very common for the ladies out there who have a menstrual cycle? are menstrual cramps and extreme cramps around their ovaries. Um, it could sideline them for a few days. I've seen this with my fiance. Can this help? Have you heard about this helping with menstrual cramps? Yeah, a lot actually, uh, oh, wow. for, for my girlfriend, for lots of people we have testimonials on it. Um, mm. it's one of those things we actually want to, um, want to get the word out about more. But see, part of the challenge with this is um, I feel like already, Ben, I'm starting to sound like the sort of uh, infomercial salesman because it's like <laughs> it's just like there's this benefit, there's that benefit. And it's uh, it's very hard to grasp unless you really have the mindset that I think like you and I and a lot of your listeners have that are just like seeking for like rationally for information. But for most people, it's just it sounds too good, like, you know, that it's working for so many things. So I mean, we focus on muscle repair and the sort of pain relieving aspects related to athletics. But one of the most powerful, some of the most powerful cases we have are with uh, endometriosis and mm -hmm. uh, women's reproductive health. Um, it's like using it for 10 minute sessions that like you actually can really stimulate like all your organs, right? Uh, like you had on your show uh, recently, a doctor talked about this. Uh, the amazing uh, uh, doctor you had on who talked about uh, how much mitochondria is in your ovaries and your eggs. Yeah, Dr. Courtney Hunt. Yeah. 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 That was an amazing interview. And uh, just something about like where the mitochondria sit are like in your inner organs. So if you can reach them with this light, yes, of course, it's going to have an effect. It's going to have a positive effect. Um, yeah, so for, so a lot, for a lot of women, it's like uh, it's it's a good friend to have 
a few days of the month. Yeah, I could imagine. Well, yeah. now that I'm going to tell my fiance to use it the next time she has hers. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, I get it. You don't want to sound, and we don't want to sound like we're just selling the product, and we're we're not. But we're we're talking about the mitochondria, and it's mm -hmm. just it, it's essential to have healthy functioning mitochondria. And there's many ways to do it. Exercise, uh, the sun will help with the mitochondria. Of course, ketosis, fasting, cold exposure, sauna, red light therapy. There's many many ways to do it. And when you, when you upgrade your mitochondria, you're going to upgrade your health. And that's why it's like, yeah, it helps with this condition and that condition, because we have yeah. mitochondria essentially in all the, most of our cells and yeah. the cells that have the highest concentration of mitochondria are the cells that are most metabolically active and very, very important. Like the gut, you mentioned the ovaries, the testicles, the eyeballs, the brain. So what about the testicles for guys? Cause I've read studies on photo bio, my photo biomodulation, increasing testosterone. Is this mm -hmm. safe to put like against the testicles? Yeah, we have a separate protocol for that though, because we really caution against um, putting like using too much. So for that, um, I believe we have on our website, we have case studies uh, also um, on it where we show testosterone increase, but it's very important not to uh, use too much infrared light because it's a very sensitive area. So that's where uh, that's where setting one usually comes in handy because the red light is totally safe and the infrared in there is just enough to give you that light stimulus. So for um, for anything that's uh, it's like endocrine or you know um, what hormone related you mean? Yeah, hormone related uh, would be like places to just be cautious about how much you expose it at the time. That makes sense. And, and yeah. you know, the same thing, the same thing with the sun, right? The sun is great and you don't want to get burned. That's not, the, that's not the goal. And it's interesting, you know, I'm just the topic of the sun real quick. Mm -hmm. We know, and you could speak on this more than I can, but the sun is just so important to health and humanity. But it's interesting that we have villainized sun, the sun, we have villainized this amazing a healing source we have right outside every single day to put the body in a healing state. And we're trying to block it. I don't know if you've, you probably have seen that, but Bill Gates and others want to block it. I think I read something where the United States government is looking at a 44 page report to do something to block the sun. We've said it's the cause of skin cancer and melanoma. Like, can we, can we get a little bit deep into what's going on here and how the sun is so important for humanity? Um, yeah, about the sun and not the politics of the sun or? Yeah, I mean, the politics, <laughs> unfortunately, is involved with it. But ideally, I don't want to get too much into the politics. But yeah, the, <laughs> the sun, like what's going on? Um, in terms of how powerful it is or the source that, of it all? The, you know, the, the benefits of the sun and what do you, why do you think they're trying to block it? You could go, you know, you don't have to hold back if you don't want to. No, why they're trying to block it. I mean, pres uh, presumably it's uh, global warming. For, for global warming. Yeah, well, that's, a, that's a rationale. But uh, yeah, thinking through the implications of how that would change and filter the light we have here on Earth. I mean, uh, it's important to at least be able to talk about the like the light environment. That's a like a clunky term, but just the idea of that there is something called the light environment that actually directly always impacts you. I mean, we chose near infrared because of this link to mitochondria and it's, hey, it's super powerful. But photobiomodulation is about the whole spectrum. Like the, all light actually impacts you. It's mm -hmm. just some things more effectively and more visibly than others. But you're always stimulated by the whole radiation that like when you're out in the sun, you have the whole spectrum the whole time. Right. And, and speaking of which, I mean, artificial light is talk about the dangers of too much artificial light. Like right now I have this big light right here. I have some lights behind me Nat I'm getting some natural light through my windows, but it's still being filtered through glass. So it's not the same thing. Yeah. So I am very aware of the artificial light and I wear things like blue light blocking glasses to help filter it out. I get outside as much as possible. So what are some of the problems with too much artificial light and not enough um, of the near infrared light with the, when it comes to the sun or, or red light? I mean, we changed everything to LED lighting over, it's almost overnight, but you know, as on the civilizational scale, it was like one moment. If you, if you take the vantage point of, you know, from the moon looking down at the earth or something, we had electricity. If you went through the fifties and the sixties, you would see at night on earth that it's lighting up everywhere. 
right? It's like more and more electricity. There's more and more power being used at night, all these light bulbs. And then at some point, if you could have a frequency meter or like certain glasses, you could look and see the frequencies that of that are emitted of the light on Earth around early 2000s. It just kind of all shifts on the spectrum because most LED lights made for households have sort of shortened the wavelengths to just be maximally effective output in order to save energy, ironically, right? So it's a mm. it's a climate uh, friendly slash, uh, you know, that kind of initiative. Um, but it had it has adverse effects on the human physiology they were never tested for but they're mass implanted they're not necessarily like you know it's not dangerous it won't kill you to be exposed to one but when you're always around it uh like that has like uh, profound consequences for us that we are kind of just living through the experiment of you know so at least being mindful of um where your sources of light come from uh, yeah super important Ben. yeah so important to consider that so is it a good idea to block the sun for global warming or should we do something else? You keep wanting to get me to an opinion on this issue. <laughs> you don't have to. I thought, it's an interesting topic. Honestly, I haven't, I haven't explored the issue in detail. To me, it sounds like one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, and it sounds like something that is like a movie script uh -huh. kind of yeah. idea. But um, I'll, I'll read more about it after this interview and keep an open mind. How is that? That sounds good. I, that's fair. Yeah. That's totally fair. Let's get back to the topic of uh, red light therapy here. I have, a, I have a whole bunch of conditions that I see my students deal with and people that come to me. We covered mm -hmm. a couple of them, like low testosterone, uh, cramping. Low back pain is very, very common, something I used to deal with for many, many years. Um, thankfully, yeah. I don't deal with that now, but can you share a little bit about what this can do for low back pain, which can be so debilitating? Yeah, I mean, that was my own entry point into it. Like, that's the one I, what I use it most consistently for. I had... Uh, some sort of old injury coupled with a bad deadlift 15 years mm, ago or something yeah. is one of those things that it's just, it healed, but it, it's always weak. It's always the weak point, like, um, having that. So, uh, I find it very effective for that. And it's very practical to use, like, cause it literally sits the, the width of it for someone your size and mine, it perfectly fits your lower back and you can just strap it around. Um, and you know, you can just walk around like you could even use it uh with exercising if you wanted to but just to um uh like to relieve the area first like that's the the sort of the, um, i don't know if you found this when you tried it yourself if you felt that sort of pulsation that comes out of the device or the warmth that it gives mm -hmm. yeah it gets really warm and then there's a fan that turns on so it doesn't get too hot right yeah so uh it cools down uh the lights because they're quite powerful lights they are yeah yeah I, I love that it's 10 minutes and I love that it's so flexible. You can use it wherever you go. Yeah. Um, so low back pain, great option for that. There's also, um, you could use it for muscle soreness, recovery, sleep. I mean, there's a lot of studies and it's not just your product that I'm referencing here. It's light, th red light therapy in general, but this one is a targeted one that's different than most out there. Um, personally, I feel really good when I'm consistently getting red light, um, whether it's from a panel, but now I've been using yours, it's more targeted. I feel really good with it. I do take some time off. And here's my thought process when we were talking a little bit ago about how do you know you're in that Goldilocks zone, that's that sweet mm -hmm. spot. Here's what, what I think would be the best way to gauge that. Well, two ways. Mm -hmm. Number one, how do you feel that day that you've used red light therapy or mm -hmm. you did that cold exposure or you did that workout? If you felt more energized the rest of the day, you probably are in that Goldilocks zone. If you felt more depleted and tired, you probably did too much. So pay attention to how you feel the rest of the day. Also, looking at heart rate variability is such a great tool to see if you've overdone it. It's going to give you a good idea of the balance of your nervous system. If you did too much, not only will you feel off, but you'll see, you'll see your heart rate variability drop and uh, it'll stay lowered for a couple of days. And that's probably not a good thing. But if you see your heart rate variability increase, that means you had a good balance of parasympathetic and sympathetic. So I would look at that, those two things, how you feel and HRV to gauge if you're doing just enough, the right amount or too much of it. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, I'm actually, uh, can I hire you for our version two team where we're trying to exactly <laughs> establish this? Because uh, we can we can measure those things in the next device that we're developing. Cool. So that we, can, we can give you data back 
to show the effect, right? So uh, maybe we talk after the show if you yeah. <laughs> we can enroll you in a research program. That is so smart. You know, looking at also resting heart rate as well, uh, that body temperature. That is so smart to do that because it, it, it's you know we could do that now, and it's super super cool. We could actually like see exactly what's happening. Of course, it's important to pay attention to how you feel, but also you could look at these numbers and gauge and see if you're doing it. Um, because a lot of people, they can't do this, uh, meaning they can't do 10 minutes of a cold exposure or even three minutes of a cold exposure. And maybe they can't even do multiple flex beam sessions because they're so, they're in a cell danger response and their mitochondria are, uh, are stuck in what's called this wartime metabolism. Dr. Robert Navio has coined this where the, their stress bucket is so high, they encounter another stress in the mitochondria lower energy production to deal with that stress. And then it gets stuck there like COVID, right? Long COVID is an example of the CDR response. A person is so stressed, their stress bucket is so full, they get COVID, they deal with COVID after a week or two, COVID is gone, but now the mitochondria are stuck in the CDR response. And if you go and tell them to do a three minute cold bath or multiple 10 minute uh, red light therapy sessions, they're gonna feel awful because they're not gonna adapt to it, right? So we gotta make sure it's being used to the right for the right person for the long, uh, right amount of time is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, for sure. That's exactly uh, uh, that's exactly the goal. Yeah. On your YouTube channel, I was telling you before we hit record, um, which is what is the name of the YouTube channel? I don't have it in front of me. Uh, it's Recharge Health. It's uh, the company, and the device we made is called Flexbeam. So the YouTube channel is called Recharge Health. I'm looking at it now. I was looking at it earlier today just to get an idea of some of the some of the anecdotal evidence you have on here, and um, you're getting some good amount of views. First of all, good job with your YouTube channel. But I, I, it's really in, interesting because I see a video here on how this person healed carpal tunnel syndrome with the mm -hmm. flex beam. Maybe you want to talk a little bit more about what causes carpal tunnel and how this helps with that, because that is a, a common problem with people on the computer all day. Yeah, sure. That is an inf uh, that's a uh, either inflammation or restriction kind of uh, problem. Like um, anything related, like carpal tunnel syndrome and similar kinds of conditions. Uh, I mean, in parallel, you have arthritis-like issues mm -hmm. uh, as well. Is usually about constriction somehow. Uh, so, I mean, the mitochondria that we talk mostly about here, that's the sort of the central mechanism so to speak, that really energizes your whole system and locally wherever you are applying it. Um, but one of the one of the effects or physiological effects of near infrared light uh, is to stimulate better blood flow and increasing oxygenation in the blood. Mm. Uh, so that's why it has this local effect of reducing inflammation if there is inflammation, but opening up the vessels. So whatever the energy you have in your hand can flow more freely after using it. It's like, it's widening it. If you, I mean, uh, my medical and scientific team would kill me for using such, such terminology, <laughs> but that's not only how I can, how I can describe what we see as the pattern of the different kinds of conditions that our carpal tunnel syndrome is one of them, uh, where clearly this kind of light and dosage has, um, has an effect. And, uh, with users, not like, for that kind of condition reporting sort of third fourth day is when it's like they started really noticing something they never noticed before right that's super cool yeah, yeah. That, that, that that's awesome um i love that you have so many different conditions and uh, again all roads lead to the mitochondria hey keto camper i want to interrupt the video real quick to share with you what i believe is one of the most important nutrients that we should be taking every single day. Most people are deficient in this nutrient and it's responsible for over 400 enzymatic activities in your body and your body just doesn't make it. So it's required to be taken in a high quality supplement or from high quality foods. The problem with the food is that our soil is depleted and it's hard to get this quality nutrient. So what is this nutrient? It's called magnesium. But I'm gonna share something with you very fascinating. Check this out. Upgraded Formulas has this incredible product called Upgraded Magnesium. And Barton Scott, the developer of this product and company, he's a brilliant guy. He created nanoparticle magnesium, which has the ability to penetrate your membranes and go right into your cell. There's a 99.99 percentage absorption rate. Now, this is unheard of because with other magnesium products, you better believe it's not that high. 
And there's an interesting study they're doing with upgraded mag. I want to share with you real quick. Early results from a sleep study with Dr. Sachin Patel showed that the average doctor in the group using this product has achieved an improvement of over 35% in deep sleep, more sleep studies than a double-blind controlled placebo study with upgraded magnesium is coming sooner. And you better believe those results are going to be super exciting. We already know this. Upgraded magnesium is easily the best supplement you can take for better sleep, including deep sleep, muscle aches, cramping, and any other signs of a magnesium deficiency, which is so common, unfortunately. What makes upgraded formulas unique, as I mentioned, is that it's a nanoparticle. This means it is absorbed very rapidly and efficiently by your blood cells. They produce a plasma-like version of minerals that the body recognizes and absorbs without digestion. And the results are phenomenal. I really believe just taking this for a couple of nights, you'll notice a big difference. So if you want to get upgraded formulas, upgraded mag, and any of their products. They also do some incredible hair mineral analysis tests to see your mineral imbalances and deficiencies, et cetera, and other incredible products that we've referenced before. Head over to upgradedformulas.com and use the coupon code KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. That is upgradedformulas.com. Coupon code is KETOSIS to get 15% off your entire order. I'm going to drop a link for you down below in the notes of this video. Okay, let's go back to this video. Now, let me ask you this. Somebody's probably watching and wondering this. Are there any contraindications, any medications that you shouldn't combine with this, anything that you should be aware of? Who should not be using this? Uh, there are not many contraindications uh, because it's generally a very safe technology and it's like it's studied for safety a lot. Uh, that's why we put it in our sort of first device. But uh, one group should be careful is if you had a recent tattoo with like very dark ink uh, to be careful because it has potential burning issue if you overuse it because it's like it changes the condition of the skin. Uh, generally, like, uh, I mean, cancer patients and pregnant women, et cetera, uh, are, there are no, they're usually told that to avoid such things because there are no studies on whether it's safe or not. Uh, there are no studies because you're not allowed to make those studies. Correct. Yeah, it would yeah. be unethical. So that's why there's the loop. There's a lot of things that are just saying, oh, you know, the pregnant women should not use it and uh, people with uh, late stage cancer should not use it and so on is because you can't get an ethical, ethical board to approve a survey of those people. So we don't know, basically. So that's... Uh, you know, that's why we caution against it as one of our contraindications. So Got I it. Think so yeah. Recent tattoos, potentially cancer patients and uh, yeah. pregnant women. Uh, what about, because these are, these are very powerful. When I look at the, when I turn this on, your device versus like mm -hmm. a red light panel that I have here, uh, this is a lot more uh, powerful. I, it's, uh, so I, I don't look at it with my eyes. And I think in the brochure with this, it said not to look at it with, with the eyes. It comes with goggles. So um, is that important to not look at your device with your eyes? Should you wear goggles all the time? And can you put this over your head or your eyes and with your eyes covered, would it be safe? Yeah, I mean, uh, we have goggles in there because in your country, we could be sued by someone if we didn't put them in there. Okay, got it. Uh, if it was up to me, I wouldn't put the goggles there. Just a very clear uh, warning that infrared light, because you can't see it, like it's literally invisible. If you stare at it, uh, your eyes won't blink because it doesn't recognize the blinking reflex you have comes from visible light. So therefore, you will not blink. And therefore, like over time, if you sit there for a while, you can really damage your eyes. Uh, it is not at all dangerous to look at the light on the flex beam or anything and you start it and you pick it up and it's like it's okay. totally not a problem. It is if you put it over your eyes for several minutes. And I don't know why you would do that, but yeah, that's, don't why do we, that. that's why we, have, that's why we would, that's why we have the goggles. Okay. Understood. And okay. can you use it on your head? You want to place it over your eyes. And we, we generally don't recommend putting it over your brain or your like okay. head or the, it's not designed for the face. It can be a very nice, you can, you can fold it and curve it and have the first setting, the skin setting. You can get a very nice glow, glowing feeling. You can hold it in front of your face for 10 minutes can be really warm up your skin and have nice skin benefits but it's not a it it's not a beauty device it's like a very powerful recovery device 
yeah, absolutely. for a multitude of uh, of different conditions. So, where do you see this this space of photobiomodulation going in the next five years? Like, what do you what do you foresee is going to happen? It's going to be more widely accepted by the conventional approach, or what do you expect is going to happen in the next five years? Yeah, also an excellent question. Uh, there's definitely a sense of a paradigm shift that I think is cresting alongside with the space that you're also in with with keto and so on. There's a, there's, there is a paradigm shift in terms of how we approach our health and that photobiomodulation will be, uh, will be more or less known, not as a term, but that this, this idea, I think, will reach more widely. Um, but I'm also somewhat worried about it being overhyped and drowning in the sea of cheap products. Uh, mm -hmm. Many of them that don't actually produce any benefits that are just riding the hype uh, right that, now. I already see that on Amazon, unfortunately. Yeah, Amazon is like a like one of the reasons we decided not to sell on Amazon is because <laughs> we looked at what actually comes up there. And it's like, do you want to be the premium device in a trash heap? Or, yeah. I mean... Sorry, I'm sure there are other if, uh, competitors are watching. I'm sure there's nice devices out there too, but uh, I don't mean to disparage, but it's just, yeah, there's a lot of junk. And right now there's um, uh, the whole idea of red light therapy, I think is about to enter the mainstream, but as a uh, cosmetic application. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, face mask uh, phenomenon has now, I've, Count, I've lost count of companies. I think there's 50 or 100 companies that are all producing basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. And they, I, you know, I don't know. They should work. I don't know. I haven't tried one. Uh, the idea of it is so, but they're only for the face. And for the face, you need just a very tiny power, like to have certain kinds of effects. Um, but that, I think, is, uh, is going to make like red light therapy synonymous with something that's like potentially superficial, potentially not really working. It can also have a boomerang effect that it just becomes known as something that is just junk. Uh, so it, it matters how you approach it and what's your light source and how you go about it. You know, it's not a given that everyone will embrace this. Um, and photobiomodulation captures so much. Uh, and many of the effects of some of the wavelengths that are established are still so subtle. Right. So one of the reasons I found near infrared to be the most interesting is because it's among the more like it's probably the most like profound effect that you can that you can feel and you can note. Right. So uh, I'm not sure if photobiomodulation will be mainstream in five years, but that something like this kind of treatment that we've tried to create and it's through this device that this is like an something you have in your home that you don't have to be in like a special interest group or follow a certain like certain podcast or a certain stream or anything that it's just it's a thing that you have so that's what we are on the path to to create this is just our version one but our vision really is that once you make it easy enough for people to use and make it powerful enough and it's also logged in with your already digital applications it can tell you stuff about yourself like why would you not want to have one of those at home you don't have to be like a uh, a super nerd like us to sort of appreciate that it's like your home doctor right it's mm -hmm. just that people haven't heard about this technology we can put this together which is what we're doing then in five years um i think a lot of people can have heard about that yeah i love that I, I, and you're right it's going to be a double-edged sword kind of like what keto is keto is so popular it's a double-edged sword a lot of people you know, do it the wrong way, unfortunately. So we're going to drop a link yeah. for those watching and listening. We're going to drop a link for the FlexBeam product down below with um, it's our, my affiliate link with the coupon code. Uh, they hooked you all up with the coupon code. So just go check out the link. If you're watching on YouTube, it's down below. If you're listening on the podcast, it's down below. Mm -hmm. Go check out the product, uh, potentially purchase it, give it a shot. I've been using it. I'm going to test it out with uh, my thigh to see if I can play basketball in a few days. I'll give you some feedback on that. Uh, but my yeah, final yeah, very question, cool. Very My cool. final question for you, Bjorn, is about um, gratitude. I love mm -hmm. gratitude, vitamin G. That's such mm -hmm. an incredible healing supplement. Mm -hmm. puts you in this loving, incredible healing state. So I want to ask you, what are you grateful for right now? I am honestly very grateful to be here and have this conversation with you. Uh, this is one of the most fun conversations I've had in a long time about this topic, and I have plenty of them. Uh, I really enjoyed discovering your show and what you do. I think you do a really, really important job. So I'm really grateful for what 
you bring out as um, as I told you, I think before we went on air, I discovered Keto back in 2014, around the time that you did as well. Same and time, yeah. So when I discovered now, like, with the, I mean, these kinds of resources you're bringing out through books and podcasts and everything, that wasn't really, the literature was very thin at that point. Uh, I think there were a lot of scientific stuff, but, you know, like you're really helping to spread a message. Uh, I'm grateful to uh, anyone who understands and participates in this, what I think is a paradigm shift for our health, that we're, you know, trying to move the world in the right direction of discovering more, making things more available for people to be healthier um, without relying on a lot of the typical things that we go to for help with health, with medical stuff, right? Well so there's said, a new well, way of doing things. So yeah, uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I want to thank your listeners for following us through this. this I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Bjorn. No, thank you for making a product and putting all the energy, the bandwidth, the resources to get it out to the masses. I'm excited to hear, you know, about version two and, and what that's going to have and include. It's so important to have something like this so we could get people away from the sick care system, get them off their medication, get them away from these nasty surgeries and this, these dangerous surgeries, these fad diets. And I'm all for it. Anything that harnesses the innate intelligence and allows the body to do what it's designed to do, which is what your product does. I'm all for it and I'm grateful for the product and I'm grateful for you. So thanks for coming on the show. Anywhere else you want them to go, a website, social media to check you out? Yeah, we're Recharge Health is our company. So recharge.health is our URL and you find us on Instagram, Facebook, wherever enter Recharge Health or Flexbeam. You will also find us. We'll drop that down below. Thank you, Bjorn. For sure. Thank you so much.